Um, we're still doing block diagrams and control systems. And uh, here I'm gonna talk about a couple of other concepts related to all this. One is this idea of superposition or, or what, how do you handle multiple inputs? Um, by the way, this is a pretty basic um, feedback path or feedback loop rather. Remember we're talking, uh, th think of uh, cruise control. Here's the speed we want to go. Here's the output, which is the actual speed of the car. That gets sensed and fed back to us. And depending on the difference between what we, the speed we want and what we think we're going, tells us the controller how much um, not thrust, uh, throttle, how much throttle to give it. But there are other inputs we don't have control of. We might be going up or down hills or into or out of the wind with the wind. So we'll call those kind of signals disturbances. And then the plant would then be like the physics of the car. Um, it's, it's not just on how much throttle we give it, but also on those other disturbance inputs. Well, the beauty of linear systems is the overall output is the sum of the individual outputs from each input. So if I had a transfer function from this input to the output and a transfer function from this disturbance input to the output, the total output is the sum of those two, not just the two transfer functions, but the output you get when due to this signal R, I set the other signal to zero. And when I look at this guy, I set that R to zero. So you just set all other inputs to zero when you're concerned about one input. And then the overall output is the sum of all of those. Um, let's take that guy and look at him. We'll set D equal to zero and find out what that transfer function from R to S, R to Y is. And then we'll set R to zero and find the transfer function from D e to Y. So from R to Y, here's what you're left with. We had, we had a disturbance come in here, but if it's zero, it has no impact, right? This guy is zero, you might as well just get rid of this whole comparison, adding or subtracting zero from it. This, this signal would be the same as that signal. So that's our basic feedback loop. Here, G1 times G2 plays the role of G. This H1 plays the role of H. You have a G over one plus GH. That transfer function is G1, G2 over one plus G1, G2, H. Now for the second one, G is not set to zero, but this input is. So this little diagram here is just this guy with no R going into it. Um, we could rewrite this block diagram this way with D more clearly the input. And we have, what do we have? This is then equivalent to that. We have G1 times H1 coming through here, but negative. And D goes into a G2, Y is Something's mislabeled here. And I think that should be a G2. This is not block diagram is wrong. And this, this should be G sub two, not G sub one. Um, then this is equivalent. So here's the transfer function just from the disturbance D to Y. So we have those two individual transfer functions. 
the total output is the sum of the two individual outputs. This output y is this transfer function times r, and this output is this transfer function times b. E. Those are the sort of individual outputs. The other signal is set to zero. So the total output, add these two guys. Anyway, that's what superposition is. Other concept that to talk about in this video is the idea of decoupling. Like here we have a disturbance or a noise signal coming in here. That's what this N is. We're tasked to find what's the transfer function from that noise source to the output. And then we want to decouple this noise from the output. And decouple will mean we want this transfer function to be zero if it can be done. It can't always be done. Um, one way to go about it is we can start manipulating the block diagram. Here's sort of this block diagram redrawn where I'm just going to call these guys in series. I'll just call that a G. And I'll label this, well, that's still labeled E. Since we're interested in this transfer function, Y over N, we set R to zero. So we can get rid of this input. Redraw it like this. Remember, this G is these two guys multiplied together. Uh, which becomes this. Well, here's the same uh, block diagram. I'll do the rest by using algebra. This E is what? N times G sub D minus, minus Y. So that's what the E is. And Y is at N plus G times E, we had what E was, D the algebra. Here's the transfer function that was asked for, the output over the noise input. Decouple means we want that transfer function to be zero so that none of the noise gets through to the output as possible. Make that true in this case, we set this numerator to zero, or we set G sub D to one over G, set G sub D to this guy. Um, I believe, unfortunately, this is not a physically realizable transfer function. So it, we decouple it in theory, but not in practice. Um, there's another way we could have done the block diagram manipulation. I'm not going to go through this in detail, but we're setting the R to zero because we're interested in only the transfer function from N to Y. I could, so I could go from this to that. I could move this comparator to the other side and then split up this comparator into two comparators. And I have a couple of inner feedback loops. I'm not going to go through this, but you end up with the same transfer function. So there's not a unique way to go about the block diagram manipulation. Anyway, that, this video is about superposition, which means handling multiple inputs and decoupling, which means set a particular transfer function to zero. That's kind of it on block diagrams. Next subjects are signal flow graphs and then Mason's rule. And we'll save them for future.